In this video, I'm gonna give you the blueprint or complete plan on everything you're gonna need in order to start making beats. Everything you will need will be explained right here. And after 17 years of making music, I try to like really sit down, write down and think about everything that I really needed in order to get started. Like if this was 17 years ago, what would I have needed to get going? And interesting enough, it's, it's not a lot of stuff, but I'd rather do this video and help somebody out rather than people go and buy a bunch of stuff that they don't even need to begin with. And then it's a waste of money. And then you have a lot of equipment and things that are just sitting around that are never used. So this should definitely help you in that regard. Definitely take notes for this one. Here's a pen. Before we get into that, in the last three videos, I talked about simple steps of beat making and I gave away some little music production secrets, talked about layers and, you know, started to get more in depth about beat making in general. I would highly recommend going back and watching those videos if you haven't yet, because it only has information that is only going to help you. So don't play yourself. Now, as I promised, my complete plan for simple steps of beat making, everything you need to start using simple steps of beat making the proper way. Number one, uh, buy a computer. <laughs> or if you have a computer, great, you're ahead of the game. I use Macs personally, but you don't need a Mac. You know, you could use PCs or whatever. Some people swear by PCs. Some people say PCs surpassed Mac. You know, I'm not gonna get into all that. However, the type of computer you use will, in some cases, very minimal cases, dictate what software you're gonna use. And that's the second thing we're gonna talk about. Second thing you need is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. But nowadays, a DAW is a software, <laughs> pretty much. I prefer to use Propellerhead Reason. A lot of people message me all the time asking what software I use, what DAW I use to produce music. There you go, Propellerhead Reason. I have been using it since the beginning of time. That's not true, but I've been it's I've been using it since like 2003 or whatever it's been. But don't get me wrong, I've used FL Studio, I've used Ableton, I've used Serato Studio, I've even used Pro Tools, the the program that I use to record vocals. I used that to make beats as well before. But if you ever heard a song or production that I've done, it was done in Propellerhead Reason. Now, for my Mac users out there, Logic is the name of a software that you can use to produce as well. You could even use GarageBand, which comes with Macs, I think, by default. But Logic and GarageBand are exclusively uh, for Mac. If you have a PC, you can't use Logic. Don't try it, you're gonna play yourself. What did we talk about? Regardless of what software or DAW you wanna use, pick your DAW and get going. It's going to cost some money, of course, but you're talking to someone who purchased their first software, first Mac, everything from working only weekends in a kitchen for 32 hours a weekend while in high school. So, um, yeah, no, no excuses. All right, so let's say now you have your computer and you have your DAW, you have your software. Now you just need some speakers or headphones, but here's the thing. I'm going to recommend to beginners to use headphones. This way you could be mobile with your music production because inspiration could spark at any second, you know, and you want to be ready. A great pair of headphones like the ones I use, these are the Audio-Technica M40Xs are a great option. Some good studio headphones like these are going to help you hear the little details that you would never hear on a phone speaker or basic computer speakers. But some people listen to music on, you know, high quality speakers and have, you know, really good high quality headphones or just some decent headphones. And those little details when you're mixing your songs is gonna make a big difference. So that's why I would recommend using headphones. Even though they say don't mix your songs with headphones, I, I kinda do sometimes. Now, if you're like, nope, nope, I don't want, I don't want earmuffs. I don't want any of that stuff. I want to use speakers. Okay, calm down, <laughs> calm down. So if you want to take the speaker route, there's an important thing to know about that. Those monstrous speakers are just these tall speakers here that you see in videos and images and like studio shots and stuff like that aren't called speakers. They're called studio monitors. Nope, they're not screen monitors, but they are sound monitors. However, people that work in the music industry just call them monitors. Now these studio monitors require a special power source. If you decide you want these monitors instead of headphones, then I would suggest these ones. These are the Yamaha HS7 monitors, a lot more expensive than headphones are going to be. But in order to power the studio monitors, you're going to need what's called a hardware interface. And there is countless options <laughs> 
for a hardware interface. There's so much out there. You would just have to go on Sweetwater.com or Guitar Center, Sam Ash, well, whatever, whatever's easiest. Probably Sweetwater would probably make the most sense. And just look up hardware interface and then just marvel at all the different options that there are for them. The most basic efficient one that's gonna get the job done for you and sounds perfectly fine is the Focusrite Scarlett interface. It's USB powered and there's ports in the back where you can just easily plug in your studio monitor. So it's there's no like really navigating with this thing. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple to use. It has the phantom power option, which is great for recording vocals. So that's uh that's something to keep in mind. So as you can probably tell already, taking the speaker out is a little bit more complicated. Eventually down the line, you'll probably need them, but right off the bat, if you just wanna get started, I don't want you getting discouraged by studio monitor prices, you know what I mean? So I would just stick with headphones for right now. And uh, honestly, that's it. If you have those three things, you are good to go. I, if you wanna get a little bit fancier um, when it comes to you know learning to make beats, what I would do, is get yourself a key station. And key station is just like a mini, it looks like a mini piano, but it's really just like a, a mini little keyboard where you could just play your notes and record your ideas using this. Some producers use MPCs. You may have seen them before. They're like square shaped and they have like 16 different buttons and you could press them to like play drums and stuff like that. But you could do the same thing with this keyboard if you align the sounds properly. So some people just swear by MPCs and that kind of style, but I say get a key station because then you can play your piano notes too and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be teaching about like composing and stuff like that. I'm gonna talk about sampling too, but I'm definitely gonna be talking about composing and coming up with notes and chords for your song. So that's something to keep in mind. One more bonus thing that could really help you and really helped me was getting keyboard lessons. Learning how to play the piano, learning how to play chords is really beneficial. I took keyboard lessons before learning how to make beats, I believe. So learning musical things like notes, keys, scales, chords, really gave me a huge advantage when it came to creating my own music. And good news, there's plenty of keyboard lessons right on YouTube now. So there's really no excuse in that regard if you wanna learn how to play the keyboard. And if you get a key station, I'd recommend doing it. Even if you watch like two or three videos of keyboard lessons, and if you implement what you've learned, it's gonna it's gonna make a huge difference for you. Now, if you watched my second video of this series, you'll see that I talked about simple steps of beat making layers. You'll need to consider these layers and you'll need to have a really good understanding of them. Kicks, for example, add depth to your production and they're the reason why a listener feels the music when they listen to it. A kick is what rhythmically makes someone want to dance. If you ever see someone dance to a song, kicks are what's provoking them to do that. Piano chords are another layer that's super important because they determine what key your song is going to be in. And it doesn't have to be piano chords, just chords in general. The chords are what determines if your song is going to be sad, happy, angry, chaotic, mysterious. You get what I'm saying. All percussion layers are extremely important as well. Without percussion like shakers and tambourines and those type of things, your drums will be dull and lifeless and have no kind of charisma to them. Percussion helps bring bright detail to your production and makes it exciting. And sure, you can know exactly how a beat should be or is supposed to be constructed, but without knowing about all the different things that I just mentioned, you really won't be able to do music production effectively. But there's much more to all this. You need high quality sounds, you need to be picking the right instruments, and you just need like a, a clear understanding of composition in order to make a song sonically pleasing for someone to listen to. But good news, all of this and a lot more is covered in my upcoming online course, Basics of Beat Making. I'll show you in extreme detail how to compose your songs properly, how to choose the right sounds, choose the right instruments, and much, much more. With this course, you'll literally be watching over my shoulders as you could just follow along and implement everything I'm doing step by step. So make sure you're on the lookout for my Basics of Beat Making course because this is literally the best information that I've ever released. And in case you haven't already, make sure to put your name on the early bird wait list the link will be in the description below and in the pinned comment below. So that way you'll be notified as soon as the course is available. And anybody on the early bird waitlist will get access to it before it even goes live to the public. That's very important because the course could sell out very quickly. In the next video, I'm gonna introduce you to somebody that 
actually use the simple steps of beat making and I'm gonna show you what they've overcome and how far they've come as a music producer and I think it'll get you really excited. Even more exciting, this is gonna show how fast you can learn simple steps of beat making. So you don't wanna miss that one. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video. Nato.